Hello, and welcome to Real Recollections. That's not how I remember it. <laughs> the show where we revisit our childhood entertainment and see if it holds up against our jaded adult lives. This week we're doing Robin Hood and his merry men. Nope, just Robin Hood. Just Robin Hood. Just Robin Hood, yeah. A fox. The fox, Robin Hood. Disney's Robin Hood. Made it sound like I thought he was really good looking. <laughs> the fox. The fox. <laughs> Robin Hood with animals. Yes. So, Jonah, what do you remember from your wee childhood about Robin Hood? Um... Why don't you go first? Me, me first? Yeah, you go first. Okay, I'll go first. I mean, I asked the question, but you know, it's fine. I'll go first. I'll go first. Go first. Okay. So, I don't remember really liking Robin Hood. I mean, I've always kind of liked the con men, con man story. Um, and I think it started here really young. I was the kid who always watched, like, action-adventure movies. Like, I, I liked those a lot. And I felt like uh, Robin Hood was... Uh, animated version of that, you know, where they trick the the bad guy through being clever and smart, and I always liked stories like that, so I really enjoyed it. You really enjoyed I it! I really enjoyed it! I did! I liked Robin Hood growing up, too. I think one of my favorite scenes when I was a kid was the first one, where they are robbing King John blind, and he doesn't know yes. it, and like literally yes. all their shenanigans are terrible. They're kissing the jewels like they would on the never fingers work. and things. I love like, that. Taking his money, literally right in front of his eyes. Yes, I thought that was so fun as a kid. What what, what is it that little John does? Doesn't he like drill a hole in the bottom of a a chest that like four men are carrying? Yes, and then drops something it like into that. His, and they're disguised to his dress. Yes, it's just a good time. And I remember it being like really fast and like jaunty. Of a and I like movie. the musical style, and I like the intro. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, like the the rooster intro? Oh, the you mean like the narrator? Yeah, you like the narrator? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it just poked me with her paw. There was one part that perplexed me a lot when I was a kid, though. Uh-huh. It's because the the um, costume was so good yeah. that I didn't know. But you know the part where they do the competition? Yeah. And he comes dressed as like a crane? Yes. You didn't know it was Robin Hood? I had no idea it was Robin Hood. Wow, you must have been really shocked. You know, it was the same voice and everything? Oh my gosh. Same clothes? It's Robin Hood. (laughs) Robin Hood would have thieved, would have robbed you blind. He would have robbed you blind. If you had been Prince John, you would have been just as fooled, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Robin Robin Hood was everything that I wanted. He could shoot bows and arrows really well. Um, He was. Arrows are so cool. Bone they arrows? are the coolest. It's, if you want to make a character that's cool, you give them a bow and arrow. That's pretty much all you need. It's like person plus bow and arrow equals cool. Let's lo- look at <laughs> Hunger Games. Let's look at Lord of the Rings. Let's look at... Let's look at just any words. Okay, so let's take like boring, boring things that are traditionally boring, add bow and arrow. Like if you say like accountant, bow and arrow. With a bow and arrow. It's, a well, he's a cool accountant, right? right? <laughs> um, I can't think of another one right now. But something like that, right? Shooting the tax. taxes plus a bow and arrow. It uh, still sounds better. You know what I mean? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Can I just say, Ruth looks so elegant right now. She does. Are you sleepy? Don't draw attention to her. She's being good. <laughs> um. But yeah. Any other thoughts, Jonah? Maybe on a different day, yeah, I would. <laughs> Are you just out of it? Tired? I'm out of it, yeah. Yeah? Why? Is it from being in person? Yeah. Yeah, it's too much. There's the social... We've actually had a lot of social things in the last two days. Yesterday we were gone, like, all day with other people. and That was strange. Our wall fell in. Oh my gosh, you guys. Our wall fell in. 
<laughs> Jonah just said it, but I'm going to say it again and pretend that you gasped more when I said it. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing what I thought you're supposed to do in your apartment and clean it. So we would clean the whole apartment. Mary was cleaning the shower. Yes. And she leaned up against one of the shower walls and it just <laughs> fell in. Yes, I'm, I'm sitting like, there. I'm cleaning. I'm at tired. At one moment. I, I'm tired, so I lean back and I feel the wall is squishy. Like it just kind of folds in instead of being there. And then I'm like, I don't think this would happen. So I lean back out and then the tiles all fall to the floor. And I was just so tired at that point. I was like, I guess it's time for bed. Okay, everybody. <laughs> it was 1 a.m. It was 1 a.m. I don't know. Sometimes I get into a cleaning mood late at night. I was already laying on my bed. And I was like, why isn't Mary going to bed? <laughs> and then I made the wall fall in. <laughs> <laughs> I had actually told her three times, like, why don't we go to bed? I know, but I was almost done. But she was listening to her book is what was happening. Oh, yeah, I didn't hear you that And too. she never heard me. Not once in the three times. <laughs> It would mean, like, uh, I want you to know our bathroom <laughs> is the size of most people's closets. Or, like, if you have, like, a four-person table, put walls on all four sides of that. Oh, my god! That's how large our bathroom is. So, imagine me getting, opening the door to that size of a room. Oh, my gosh. And then saying, Mary... It's past midnight. We should go to bed, but she doesn't hear you. You guys, I was listening to a really good book by Drew Hayes called Superpowered, and I just was really in it. And <laughs> I was cleaning, and I had just been thinking all week. You know how, like, when you're on a run, a roll, in on a roll, is how you say it. You're on a roll. Yeah, that's how you say it. Yeah, For some reason, it sounded really weird when I said it. Just when like you're it. literally sitting on a roll. <laughs> when you're sitting on a roll. No, and you're on a roll, and you, um, you're you afraid that if you stop, you just won't do it again for a month. That's kind of where I was at. I was like, I, I'm jiving with this cleaning thing right now. I'm ready. I had a Diet Coke way too, way too late at night, and I just, I feel like I'm going to get it done right now. <laughs> so I did. To be honest, I'm really grateful. Let's hope that, uh, you know, our monthly monthly cleans... Don't end up with walls falling in every time. If Aaron and Mary, yeah, that's true. Every time Aaron and Mariah come over, we clean. I thought you were going to say, I hope that, you know, we don't just do, like, another monthly cleaning in, like, a month. Oh, yeah. I also do. hope we clean in between that. In between in and out. Yeah. So I was thinking about <laughs> how, yeah, Aaron and Mariah are our brother and sister-in-law. So whenever they come, we clean, too. So that's, that. that's good. <laughs> so Robin Hood. So Robin Hood. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I was just like, are they putting everybody in jail <laughs> when you were a kid? <laughs> yeah, I obviously remember a lot of the show. Yeah, I remember a lot of what happens. I also remember really liking like Robin Hood and oh gosh, now I'm not going to be able to remember her name, even though I'm about to say that I liked their relationship. Robin Hood and help me out here, Jonah. Marion, made Marion. Yes. Oh, and I love her nurse. How the she's chicken not the princess. Is it because she's an animal? That's just wrong. It's because she's an animal. It's just because she's a fox, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> make her a princess. No, it's because she didn't make enough money. Well, technically, she's made Marion. She's not a princess. She's just a lady. I'm lady. not sure what is that. Ma I don't know what her um Marianne. what her status is. Mary Library. But yeah, um, I think that she, so I'm not sure if she's a princess, but I really like her. I liked her nurse. She was awesome. Yeah, I just remember the whole thing. All of the scenes are iconic to me. I wonder if it'll be episodic when we watch it, because it does, like, in my mind, it's very sectioned. It's like the robbery, and then it's the competition. Oh, and there's the whole part with the little kids animals that get their ball stuck in the royal and that's how you make marion their arrow their arrow that's right i should have remembered because it was an arrow of course robin had such a good guy he's like hey why don't i give a lethal weapon to a nine-year-old <laughs> <laughs> and then him and his friends will go and shoot it for fun yeah into just, places they can't see yeah and you have no idea if someone's there of course, you know, in all the movies, people, like, you know, 
they grab both arrows out of the air, so it's no big deal. Like, if an arrow's coming at you, right. just get it out of the air. Like, doesn't Little John literally outrun an arrow? <laughs> Probably. In this movie. <laughs> I guess we'll see. We'll see, because we're going to go watch it. Right now. Right now. Right now. So, to jog your memory. Is it jog your memory? Yeah, to jog your memory. It's not like jog. Kickstart it. To... Uh, well, here. Well, anyways, here's the <laughs> plot in the pitch. <laughs> Roll the camera, Sam. Sometimes you gotta do some bad to do some good. Robin Hood and Little John rob from the rich to save the people of Nottingham, plus one child's birthday party. However, when Robin Hood steals from a prince with serious mother issues, he must use all of his wits, skills, and inexplicably effective bird disguises to free his true love and protect his half-British, half-Southern friends. Ooh, da lolly. Thanks, Mary, for that wonderful plot in the pinch. <laughs> now we go into... You're welcome. Oh, You're oh, so thank welcome. You. I feel very welcome. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't stop. I How feel like I, I am welcome. <laughs> I am welcome. Thank I am you. welcome. You are welcomed to this. Yes. Just call me welcome from now on. <laughs> you got it, welcome. Oh, who are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Just oh my gosh. kidding. All so, right. Yeah. We're going to head into the history, Let's guys. Let's do it. Let's look in, delve into the years past. So Robin, Robin Hood was originally... Sp- well, they were thinking about doing another film other than Robin Hood, uh, uh, centered on a character who is a fox. What's it called? Reynard the Fox? Reynard the Fox. Reynard the Fox. Yeah. Uh, but he was a little bit too villainous for Disney. They felt like they couldn't quite get the anti-hero down yeah. so that you actually still liked him. Yeah, it was Walt Disney who actually originally was like, oh, maybe we should do Reynard the Fox. But then they're like, yeah. huh, it seems like... Maybe we shouldn't do this story where all these animals are sent to him and then they, like, die in gruesome ways yeah. and all these things. Yeah, somehow Murderous Fox doesn't really scream Disney <laughs> to me. Tricks them into dying or, or whatever, etc. It's just a bit dark. Yeah. It does sound like a fun book, though. It does. Uh, anyways, Ken Anderson was on the artistic... Was the artistic director since uh, Walt Disney died. So he was working on this film artistically and he decided that... <laughs> Maybe the best he's way to tell... He's being artisty. <laughs> yeah, he's being art- <laughs> artsy. He was doing an artistry thing. thing. And... Yeah. <laughs> I'll have you guys know that we've been to like four art museums in the last month. So, <laughs> so we're we know artsy art. <laughs> and sometimes we even read those little boring plaques next to them. <laughs> and sometimes we know what they're talking about. That's the real... Yeah. I'm like, yeah, sure, desert sure. trans form dentalism or whatever it is <laughs> i understand what transcendentalist yeah i get that <laughs> i'm with Th- it that's I'm something here. i use in my regular <laughs> conversations yeah i'm saying that's trans i guess you would just call me a uh, desert transcendentalist from now on <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh anyways so uh ken Anderson was the one who decided, oh, maybe we should do Robin Hood, and he brought it to Walt and... Wait. Sorry. No. Not to Walt. <laughs> Walt is dead. I'm just... Oh, no, you said that so... <laughs> Walt's dead. I'm just used to saying that they brought it to Walt, and he's like, oh, that's a great idea, but no, he's been dead for like... A year you remember or that two. Hannah, when, when our younger sister was really young, she didn't understand that uh, we were just driving in the car, and I don't. I think I was talking about like I had started reading a Charles Dickens novel, yeah. and and I was like, I don't know. Somehow it came up that he was dead, which like seems obvious, right? But Hannah was just like, was it Hannah or was it, it Anne? Was Hannah, yeah, it was yeah, Hannah. Hannah. Okay, so Hannah, um, she was like ten at the time. Ten maybe. at the time, yeah. She says in the most like, um. Distraught. Surprised, distressed voice. She's like, Charles Dickens is dead? <laughs> Why didn't anyone tell me? <laughs> well, I didn't think it was necessary. We laughing His so last book came hard. out like what? Turn of the century or something? <laughs> she was so earnest about it, though. I was like, I bet people who were alive when Charles Dickens died 
didn't react in such a visceral way. <laughs> Charles Dickens is dead! <laughs> it's just really funny. <laughs> Anyways, what does he is dead? Maybe he still did bring it to him. He's like, if you're listening. <laughs> if you're listening, Walt, do you say that this... Yay or nay to yay Robin or nay Hood. to Robin Hood. <laughs> Anyways, move this feather. If the, point, <laughs> the point is, it gets agree. They agree that oh, that would be a good idea. But they decide to sort of marry the two stories of Robin Hood and uh, Renard the Fox uh, mm-hmm. by making all the characters in Robin Hood anthropomorphic animals, which is actually the first time they've done this, really, for a full, yeah, full for length a full film. length film. They had done it in the animated sections of Song of the South. Yeah, and yeah. like. The mice and Cinderella are anthropomorphic. A little bit. I mean, they're a little bit more like mice that just have little shirts on. They stand on two feet all the time. That's true. (laughs) And so, and stuff. And so, and things. I'm just saying they're not necessarily bound to the laws of nature. No, that's true. But yeah, but these animals are not at all acting the way animals are. And it's the first film since Bambi to have a full animal cast. Yeah. Exactly. But it very different from Bambi because Bambi, they were all about getting it real, you know, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. getting everything right. And in this one, it was more about, yeah, yeah, seeing how they can make the animals act like humans. I know what you guys are thinking because that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, I was like, yeah, but what about Lady and the Tramp? And I was like, oh, oh, wait, yeah, no, there are humans in that one. And yeah. Oh, and wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, Aristocats. Oh, 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 oh wait, yeah, no, no, there, no, there, are, there are humans in, in that one too. So I guess you're right. Always trust the internet. <laughs> <laughs> we do not quote us on that. Um, Speaking... Please do not blame us if you trust the internet on <laughs> some sort of scam. We are not say endorsing. <laughs> <laughs> But speaking of research. Yes. Speaking of research, what? Oh, yes. <laughs> that was my cue. I thought, I thought it was a very clever segue. <laughs> I was hoping you would pick up on it, but it didn't work out this time. Let's try again. Speaking so, of research. Speaking of research, um, Disney didn't really do much research on the original Robin Hood story. So they didn't like going, kind of like Jungle Book, they didn't read the book they weren't like i'm gonna go look up all these old legends you know put them all together decide which ones i like make a full movie out of it blah 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 instead they just watched other movies that had been made about robin hood and basically just made like a disney version of it and i think it has a little reynard the fox in it too and that reynard the fox was very much like a uh con men yeah con man and so um they kind of put that into robin hood as well yeah <laughs> i think it's kind of funny it's kind of like the version of disney's robin hood is like a telephone game version of robin hood yes it's like fourth <laughs> what what do you call it because when, when you're getting source material or when you're citing sources in your in your like fancy papers in college uh-huh. you have like first person source prime and, source and then there's like secondary original and source it's like fifth or sixth oh, source shoot. by yeah. the time it got down to disney they're like hearsay oh. this is my hearsay source because <laughs> the this, this story of robin hood is already hearsay like nobody yeah, yeah, yeah. people don't even know if that's real <laughs> and then there's like a bunch of books that are like based off of the legend and then <laughs> they didn't even read those they just watch the movies that were based yep. off of the fictional novels based off of the maybe fictional character I mean, maybe non-fictional character (laughs) who lived way back in the day. Yes. Yeah. So... They based it off Hollywood movies, which, you know, are also notoriously good at looking at source material. Right. Right. What I would recommend when you watch the Disney Robin Hood is to not imagine it as Robin Hood. Just think of it as a coincidentally (laughs) named person who does similar things to somebody who is also named Robin Hood. (laughs) Exactly. It should be easy. They're all animals. They're all animals. <laughs> I don't think there were animals in real life. Right. Exactly. If it ever happened. Yep. And I bet they didn't sing country music in, in you know, ancient England. So, you I know. I don't know about that. I feel like... <laughs> Hearsay. Who's, who's to say? Where's there, your source? There was no musical notation. <laughs> Could have happened. You're right. You're right. Um, so... One thing that happened when they decided to make it the anthropomorphic animals is that um, they actually changed a lot of... So Ken Anderson made 
basically, what do you call them, concept art for all of the animals and all the characters and who they could be, etc. Um, but actually, Reiterman changed a lot of those characters. Some of them were for um, practical reasons. I think Ken Anderson even changed the one. So Friar Tuck was originally supposed to be a pig. And then they thought, oh, maybe that'll offend religious people if, like, a priest is a pig. Um, which honestly didn't even occur to me when I was reading it until I read that. But I was like, oh, yeah, I could see that being a Right. I guess it would determine on how it was animated. Yeah, exactly. If he was more of a positive character or whatever, um, which he is. But just to be safe, they changed it to a, uh, what do you call it? A badger. Because um, that's less offensive. Because that's less offensive. Yeah, Badgers don't offend anybody. Everybody loves badgers. Yep. <laughs> Badger for your ladger. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a real word. Anyway, I'm just Dr. Seussing it right <laughs> you're now. just trying to Dr. Seuss it. Um, but yeah, uh, they also he also changed a lot of the villainous animals. So um, originally, Sheriff of Nottingham was supposed to be a um, a goat, but they changed him to a wolf. Who kind of looks like Blue, if you notice, which made him easier to animate. Wait, cause, what? what? Wait, you said he was supposed to be a goat, and then we changed him to a wolf, which looks like Blue. Uh, but don't you think he does, kind of? The Sheriff of Nottingham? Like, his body shape and everything, they even make jokes about it. They kind of, shape-wise, kind of looks like Blue. So I wonder if that was another way that they kind of cut the cuss, because they animated him very similarly to other things. Maybe. I know that was the case for Sir John. I mean, it was even voiced by Phil Harris. And I mean, John. Little John. Little John. <laughs> little John. Because he's a bear. He looks almost exactly like. Right. That's true. But anyway, like they, they didn't make it a goat. They kind of made all of the villains were kind of carnivores, etc. And some sources that we've read, I'm just going to go ahead and say that this is a little bit hearsay, but some people said that Ken Anderson was really sad about some of the changes. He really liked his concept art and um, wasn't happy with them not going with it. They did a lot of it, they said, to save money, etc. Yeah. One of the most clever anima- cleverly and cleverest animated character in the film, I think, is Sir Hiss. <laughs> uh, his um, English is obviously much more clever than mine. Um, <laughs> but anyways, snakes are always a hard thing to animate. Uh, I they think did, we've discussed that with Jungle Book. And with Ka, <laughs> yeah. But they actually say that Ka had l- very little to do with Sir Hiss, as as far as influence goes. Yeah. Because Ka, Ka was supposed to be bound by anatomy and stuff like that. He was supposed to look like a real snake. Right. And uh, Sir Hiss was supposed to be much more of a caricature of a snake. And so they really had to go back to the drawing board of, like, how do we make a snake have reactions? And what they realized is that snakes kind of just have really long necks. So what ended up happening is the geese in Aristocats were more of an influence on Sir Hiss than Carl was, which is really interesting. <laughs> that is interesting, The geese yeah. are like, what? That's not even close to a snake. <laughs> but because their bodies are too far down for them to really use their shoulders as... An expressive tool. Expressive tool. Yeah. They're very similar to the snake. So what, what I... They actually never saw this, said this, but what I see happening in the movie is that they use the first half of his body as, like, his torso. So that... That never changes. It, it's yeah, like your back. usually from, like, a certain point up, it, it kind of stays the same. But then the bottom half of his body is always coming up and doing all these gestures, counting yeah. money, licking his tongue to turn pages with the tip of his tail and things like that. Yeah, so his the end of his tail kind of becomes his gesturing limbs, right? There's even that part where, at the very beginning, where he pulls two coils yeah. of his uh, body up, and they look like he's pressing his elbows, head on his arm. Yeah. yeah. So it was a really clever way of doing Sir Hiss. They seemed really proud of what they were able to do with him. There's like a 10-page segment on Sir Hiss in one of our books. Yeah, exactly. Yep, with lots of pictures, etc., um, but there's they this did really do cute a, uh-huh. concept art of him of wearing a sweater. <laughs> it's just a long cute. sock type thing. It's yeah. so cute. Um, it made me want like a Sir Hiss like stuffed animal. But <laughs> um, but they did try to cut corners a lot in this movie. Like cut cost, cut the amount of time they need to do concept things. You know, like and develop new animation. So they literally just put basically Baloo in this film. They just gave him a shirt 
in a hat and made him yeah. brown instead of more black. Yeah. Yeah, or blue, I guess. Yeah, essentially they were trying to make... All of a sudden I was like, what does blue look make, like? <laughs> make characters very similar in movement to other characters that they had animated in the past because they would know how to right. animate them. Exactly. And so we've got the vultures from other movies. We've got, you know what I mean? Um, if there's been an animal that was slightly anthropomorphic-ish, it's in this movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, Robin Hood's clothing is exactly like Peter Pan. Yeah, exactly. Um, except for they like change the color of his hat. And they literally, scene for scene, reanimated portions from other films. So you can go watch online. It's pretty crazy. There's a YouTube video where they show you... Like reused animation. Reused animation is what it's called. Uh, the most, most of it happens in one scene. It's the, the phony king of England um, s- song where they're all dancing. And basically that, that song is just a mess of all the different dance scenes... From Snow mm-hmm. White, Aristocats, and Jungle Book. Yeah, there is almost no original material in that scene. It's about 50-50, but still, it's... Yeah. Because, I mean, they there's They throw on a few po- things, like the puppet show. Puppet show and and you're like right. That. But, like, I think all the dancing itself The dancing part is, is mostly... Is mostly... Yeah. Dancing scenes from other <laughs> films. From Aristocats, from way back Snow White. Um, I know. Yeah. So, depending on how you look at it... Positive or negative. Although, if you, you know, would ask them, they would never say it was particularly to cut back. Remember, Wooly Reiterman was always very proud of the old animation. That's true. And he's like, it works. It's always going to be easier to draw from something than. Yeah. And I would say, if you didn't know, like you're watching, it's fun. You're not like, this is a copy of blah, blah, blah. Because it's yeah. different background, different characters, etc. So, yeah. Although, they do use one of the reused animations, like, twice or maybe three times in yeah. it. And at that point I'm like, okay. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, guys. I think that's when I start that's when I start to go, hey, wait a second. <laughs> but it's something you would never notice probably as just a casual viewer, would you? Without knowing? I mean as a kid I didn't really notice it. But I also never really thought much of that dance sequence. Yeah, that's true. Whereas I remember the Jungle Book dance sequence a lot more, even though I watched that less. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Although I used a lot from that, too. Yeah. Just everything. But yeah. Um, in addition to that, of course, we've got our voice actors in this one. This one, so they had kind of started with, uh, which film was it that they they started having famous people? It was Jungle Book, right? Famous people come in and sing or compose. No, Lady and the Tramp. Cinderella. <laughs> You're just naming things. No, now. I think it was Cinderella. <laughs> this is one of the. It was Bambi and then Cinderella. Cinderella was the first one where they brought in actual songwriters to come in and do the. Right, but this film was all all the songs were composed by one famous singer, and that kind of brought it in. And this kind of paves the way for later films like um, Tarzan. You're talking about Lady and the Tramp, then. Yeah, I think I'm talking about Lady and the Tramp. But, like, you know, how Tarzan has, what's his name? Phil Collins does all the songs, and I guess he sings them, too, in Tarzan. Um, This is kind of like that. Roger Miller wrote all the songs. He was a really famous country singer. Um, And so you can hear his, I mean, he literally voices it, voices the rooster, um, and does all of those songs. But he also wrote the rest. And that was kind of a draw of the film as well. Yeah. I love that rooster. That's one of my favorite parts of the film. Yeah, he's so dapper. He's the best. I really and like I like his uh his animation, his style. Me too. And everything about that. <laughs> yes. Um there are also some other really notable voice acting um people in this film. <laughs> voice actors. Yes. <laughs> voice acting <laughs> People who act. Thank you. People who act yeah. with their voices. Voice actors. In films. There are voice actors <laughs> who we should also talk about. Uh, one of them being Brian Bedford, who was a Canadian Shakespearean actor who actually won seven Tonys in his life. Yeah. He's yep. the one, he played Robin Hood in this film. Yeah. Yeah. He, he played Robin Hood, and I thought he did a great job. I thought so too. Robin Hood does a bunch of different voices in the 
throughout the film. Yeah. So. That's what I was realizing as I was listening as well. Yeah, he does a really excellent job, and his name is really fun. Brian Bedford. And he's Canadian. Brian Bedford. Do you have to like all Canadians? Isn't that a rule? Like, they're the best. I think so. <laughs> but, you know, his name sounds so British, and he's a Shakespearean actor. I think it kind of cancels it out. It kind of cancels. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, another one is Peter Ustinov, who also won a Tony later on his down, the, down the career so he down became the career. <laughs> <laughs> so he became the second person to have voiced a disney character to win a tony oh there you I go i read that somewhere so, okay. <laughs> i read that the first, first one being it's roger miller true. the yeah. first one being roger miller uh he did uh prince john and king richard yeah which i think is fun it's kind of like he also voiced prince john for the german Oh, really? Cast. Yes, but not King Richard for whatever reason. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. King Richard, like, what, says one line? So what, he, <laughs> spoke, like he spoke, like, German fluently? Is that why they had him come in? Or did they just make him, like, do it phonetically, do you know? Oh, I, I would assume he had he spoke it. He spoke German? I guess. Interesting. Ustinov. It doesn't sound particularly German, but... It sounds more Russian, Russian. or something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well. <laughs> but yeah, he does a really good job. I mean, he, he you've got to have talent to do those slightly villainous, kind of pathetic villains. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I think there's a lot of detail in the way that he does the lines that are really great. Yeah. Uh, one story that's kind of funny about him is they needed him to come back to do, redo a couple of of lines for the film. But they couldn't find him. They called Tokyo, France, I mean, Paris, Italy, England, like all these different <laughs> places where they thought he might be. And they couldn't find him. But he ended up just being down the road at CB, what? C, C, CBS. CB and C. CBS is a thing. I don't know. <laughs> so At a different film studio. At a different film st- studio, just a half mile down the road. So, lucky, yeah. Yeah, lucky then. I just hope that someday, I think my favorite part of that story is I hope someday someone's trying to get a hold of me, they don't know where I am, and, and they have to, they call, have six to seven... call six countries, because <laughs> they're not sure which one I'm in. <laughs> I love Life that. goals right there. I love that so much. <laughs> I don't think that would ever happen, because they could just call you directly now. Uh, Stupid that. cell phones ruining Stupid everything. Stupid cell phones ruin everything. <laughs> uh, or they could email me, like, ugh. Yeah, or text me. Please text me. Please, uh, yeah, text me. <laughs> they, whenever they ask, like, texting is okay, I'm like, yes, preferred, wanted, desired, text me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, nah, some things are better over the phone. Actually, sometimes I'd like to order food more over the phone than I agree. to order it online. Sometimes you're like, um, I don't understand your menu. Or you're like, I don't understand, I don't think you'll understand what I want unless I tell you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. And you can ask, like, current time questions, etc. <laughs> well, <laughs> also, I'm hungry, I just realized. <laughs> I'm hungry, too. I just realized, too. After podcast, lunch. Okay. Let's eat. Let's eat. Um... So, another thing about this film is it's the last film that George Bruns does. Which makes us all the sadness. All the sadnesses coming out. Um, <laughs> so, he did, if you don't remember, George Bruns did the score for five of the Disney animated films that we've talked about. He did Sleeping Beauty. Wait, wait, wait. You name them. Name them before we do. Ready, go. Okay, now Mary, go. Good job! No, you have good to do the Dora thing. Like, good job, guys. Good job, everyone. Don't worry if you didn't get all of them right. Pause the <laughs> podcast right now. <laughs> but now I'm not going to be able to name them all. But no, let's good. see. You got this. So, Sleeping Beauty. Okay, yes. 101 Dalmatians. Yep. Robin Hood. Yep. Aristocats. Yes. Jungle Book. Oh! Uh, 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 you did uh, great. Oh. <laughs> I think he has, like, amazing variety in those. He does. Except for... Th- this one, Robin Hood, and Aristocats have some very similar moments. Yeah, they do. Uh, but other than that, like, Sleeping Beauty and 101 Dalmatians... Are, like, night and day different. I mean, Sleeping Beauty is obviously going to be super different because it's an adaptation on mm-hmm. the ballet, but still. Yeah. But he also, um, if, you, if you're if you a grand Disney lover, he also scored Pirates of the Caribbean, Country Bears. He wrote Yo-Ho, Yo-Ho. 
Pirates, Pirates of the me? Caribbean, The Ride. The Ride. Yeah, sorry. No, Hans Zimmer did the other one. Or Hans Zimmer. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're sad to see him go. He died 10 years after this film, so I guess he needed that retirement, sad, you know? Sad, sad. Yeah, he died. He retired at age, like, 53 and died at 63. That's kind of young. Yeah, that's kind of young. Just given his like That's like six art. years from now for our dad. <laughs> Oh my gosh, stop. <laughs> seven, seven or eight years. Something like that. I don't know. How, it's, it's more than Dad that. doesn't want you to reveal his age on this podcast. Oh, Dad, is he 55? Oh my gosh. I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. It would be like if Dad retired right now and then died. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, he may not have actually retired. It just said that... It, he didn't it, do it any more for Disney. Disney yeah, it was his last Disney film. Yep, but... Lucky for him, this film did really well at the box office. Yeah, it did. Actually, it did the best at the box office when it was first released. Yep. Yep. It made $9.5 million, which was more than any other Disney film had. On its first to, release, On its right? first release, up to date. Yeah. I mean, in the, lo- in the s- scheme of things, later in the career, or whatever. <laughs> later <laughs> in the art time of this uh, of film. This film. <laughs> I mean, a lot of other... You never see merchandise for this film, so it's no. not going to make as much. It had the some new releases. The mom got me to like a Robin Hood and Maid Marian stuffed animals. Really? Yeah, she did. I think they're at home somewhere. It's definitely not something that you see very often, and there's not like a ride at Disneyland or whatever. no, yeah. So I mean, I think ultimately it didn't make as much money, but in its first release, it was super successful, and uh-huh. we gotta say it. It saved Disney's animated <laughs> studios. <laughs> Every film made saved Disney animated studios. Without this film, we wouldn't have Disney. No Frozen, <laughs> no Tangled. You, you know, couldn't let it go. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't. Yes, you wouldn't be able to let anything go, <laughs> or have filled any of your ice power. <laughs> wishes I don't know. Needs. um oh my gosh i i actually they, they didn't talk that much about it like oh this saved the studio i think it was more that since this and the last two movies had made money i think it's more of a security thing right i think at this point the studio is pretty established where even if they don't do well on a movie at this point it's not going to end the studio yeah i think it was solidifying it for sure and the fact that like um they really cut costs and things, I think also helped it out. I think animated movies are just more expensive to make. They are. At least at this time. So, um... Okay, they're easier for merchandise, though. Yeah, that's good. Because if you have an animated movie, then it's a lot cuter. Like, the stuffed animal's a lot cuter than, like, if you have, <laughs> I don't know, a real person, and can... then you make them a stuffed animal. It's kind Point of in fact, just look at the Barbies they make of, like... Harry Potter characters or something. And you're Ew. like, stop. No. Don't do it. They don't look like that. <laughs> Ruth's like, would they actually do that? <laughs> Give me Dumb this humans. Right now. <laughs> um, making me feel really insecure. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter what Ruth thinks. It's okay, Jonah. Be secure yourself. Um, so one influence of, that, pe- that people have said this film had also was Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. So it was very much like a buddy film, a lot of shenanigans, etc. Apparently Jonah hasn't seen it, which is just a travesty. Um, But it came out in 1969, and so they think that it kind of influenced the tone of this piece as well. Um, And then also the song from this film, Love. Love, it seems like one yesterday. That one. Um, <laughs> That's a beautiful rendition. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm a singer. So it was nominated for Best Song that year at the Oscars, but actually lost. Guess who? Two. Barbra Streisand. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Thought you would enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> of course it lost. Anything Barbra Streisand does should win everything. <laughs> She's a goddess of the voice. Of the voice. So yeah, it was her song that's like... Or something like that? I can't remember now. All of a sudden, I'm not sure. But her song, that year one. And of course, this came out in November 
1973. I can't believe we're in the 70s. I don't know why. Suddenly it feels like well, more modern. I know. It's like, uh, <laughs> I was almost born <laughs> in 25 in years later. Years. <laughs> Ruth just fell off the bed. It's like, I might be, like, I might know somebody who was born in this, like, who's, like, my friend and not just my parents. I, I know, right? It's crazy. Suddenly the 70s start to feel like, this is now, even though it's not now. Yeah. That's strange. Yeah. It's weird, right? Are the 80s gonna... It's weird thinking that, like, the 70s are gonna feel like the 50s to <sighs> the kids who are being born right now. I know. It was that long ago. It was that long ago. I wonder if they're gonna start being, like, the 2010s had, like, this distinctive... Well, the 2000s already did kind of have yeah. its own distinctive thing from the 90s. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I remember the first time I watched a movie that I really liked. It was like some Disney Channel original movie. And I watched it and I thought, oh, wow, their clothing is like really dated. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember when I watched that and all their clothing was perfectly up to date. Well, I still remember I, whenever I think about like clothing being dated, I think about when I was in elementary school and I was in fifth grade and all the girls were wearing like this like semi camo prints and stuff with like oh. the with like the rhinestones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that was a big thing. And so like I felt like the prettiest, most like with it girl when I went mom bought me this shirt that had it was like green camo fashionista thing. But then it had like rhinestones all across the front of the blouse. And, like, down the sleeves. And, like, at the elbows, the sleeves flared out. Oh, yeah. It was so yeah. much. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I love the elbow flaring out trend. Yeah, that it was great. flared out at the elbows. Hannah had a shirt that she wore for, like, seven years. Because she didn't grow for, like, a decade. <laughs> 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 that Amazing. was like that. Yeah. But that's the history. Actually, I actually have one more thing Oh, you I have forgot. one more thing? Okay, oh, hey, go ahead. The beginning song... When it goes da da di da do di da da di da di da da that part, uh huh. Uh, you may recognize it, and you may not recognize it from the movie. Yeah, because you know the infamous hamster song. Yeah, it's that song twice as fast. Oh my gosh, what an annoying thing they made yeah. from Robin Hood. I know. I actually have a funny anecdote for that because <laughs> this one time. I had always wanted an MP3 player growing up, but I, I could never have had one. I can't them. even keep track of my <laughs> headphones now. Uh, <laughs> I like share one pair of headphones <laughs> with, with <me>. Mary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, one time I found an, an MP3 player on the ground or something, and I was with Hannah, and we were like, should we try to like, take it to a lost and found or whatever and i remember i was like that would be the right thing to do and then we kept it but there were only (laughs) like oh my gosh i can't remember where we found it if it was at school or if it was just like on the street because it was on the street i don't know where are you gonna take it to anyways there were hardly any songs on it and most of them we hated but there was the hamster song on there (laughs) and we would listen to that and dance secretively because (laughs) We didn't want people to know that we had stolen this MP3 player. Oh my player. gosh! There was a lot of guilt. Wait, what did it look like? What did it look like? It was like? tiny. It was like one of those... Okay, was it blue? Oh, uh, yeah. Was it a little blue one? Yeah. Because I think that's still in a junk drawer somewhere in our house. Yeah. Because I think I looked at it and I was like, where did this come from? Because like now MP3 players are ancient, right? And I'm sitting there going, why do we have like this tiny blue MP3 player? I've never even seen it. I know. I remember when I was super... Um, I felt super tech savvy because... I had a phone that had MP3 storage. So my phone was my MP3 player. It was like a slide phone. (laughs) Yes, it could have like 20 songs on it or something. Much better, than though, than when I used to carry around a CD player. (laughs) Tiny little portable CD player. Yeah. And the CDs. Oh, my goodness. I remember when um, the phone, because I shared a phone, I think, with you and Heidi. Yeah. For a long time. And it was that slidey up one that had a... No... Oh, I'm thinking of a darker one, okay. and it, it slid up, and you had, like, the full... Keyboard? Keyboard. Yeah. And it could store songs on it, and there was, like, you could put, like, ten songs on it. Yeah. Or something like that. <laughs> and I remember most of it was choir songs, and there was this one version of Cachini's Alleluia, 
that I listened to over and over again this one day at school when I had gotten like really sick halfway through the day. And then my teacher just said, you should just go lay down on the couch. And our, our, my school at the time was in this really old church building. Oh, that's and right. Was like in, amazing. in the foyer of what would have been, yeah. A church building. Interesting. And I was like there and I turned it on with the crappy, crappy, crappy uh uh, I think you were speakers. just sharing with Heidi because I had my own phone. Oh, was it? I was, I was just sharing with Heidi yeah. then. Uh, and I listened over and over again to that song on the crappy speakers, and I put it like right up to my ear so nobody else could hear. That's amazing. Yeah. And sad. A little sad. A little sad. A little <laughs> fine. A little fine. Whatever. But nobody could pick me up, so it wasn't like I could go home. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, guys, that's the history no, of Robin Hood. That's actually the history. <laughs> That's its legacy. Now, we're going to go on to what we thought of the movie when we watched it. I know what Mary thought. What? You loved it. I really liked it. Is it your number one now? I don't know. I don't know if it's my number one, but I really liked it. Mary loves this movie. I love this movie. Guys, I love action adventure. I love a little con men part. I think that Sir Hiss is so funny. He just in like all takes of his all the scenes. boxes for you. It takes all the boxes for me. What do you feel about the love story? It could have been more involved. Well, I feel like okay, so like I liked the love story for as long as she was there, but then like she had nothing to do with the whole third act of the of the show. I that do was think it was funny because there's an article that was like minor love sto- story or whatever. And they said, you may be wondering why you felt like you never saw Maid Marian in the film. And they're like, oh, it's because she only had 30 minutes of screen time. But then I was like, actually, that's a lot of screen time. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. And she definitely had more lines than Sleeping Beauty. (laughs) Yeah. That's a lot of screen time. Like, that's way more screen time than any of the other love interests. Especially in Disney. You know, Uh, yeah. Let's talk Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, if you think about, like, the prince in Cinderella, she got way more screen time as, like, the... I think it's that there's just a lot more, a lot of other stories being told at the same time. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stories being told. But, yeah, I still like the love story. Like, I like Maid Marian. I think she's really fun. Um, I like the way that she talks to the kids. And Me too. she's just fun. I wish that maybe she had more of a life outside of her love for Robin Hood. But I like her as a person. Like, she's really awesome. Yeah. yeah. I do, too. I wish she had, like, some other aspiration other than just marrying Robin Hood. And that yeah. she... It just felt like she's just waiting for Robin Hood to, to come, come and save her. Blah, but she blah. seems like a perfectly capable woman. But also, I will say this. She do- she says she's waiting for Robin Hood, but she doesn't seem, like, distraught. She's, like, having no. fun. Like, That's true. doing sports with playing backgammon with her... Not backgammon. What is it called? Badminton. Badminton. Playing badminton. Bad Gavin? <laughs> I don't know even. <laughs> um, but playing that with her nurse. And I think like it says a lot about her, like her nurse being who she is, and she's like so spicy and so like funny and everything. Yeah. That I mean she just seems like a fun lady. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say overall I enjoyed this movie too. I do feel like I don't know. It's hard for me, the animation, because I just miss the golden silver age yeah. animation so much. I know. It's hard when you're watching back to back and you're like, but but wait, what about Sleeping Beauty and I know. Pinocchio it's like, and Remember the days when we used to watch the film and go, Oh, that's that was beautiful. beautiful. That's beautiful. You don't really do that. No, you know, you don't do that. It's no. gotta be more about the story and the characters and then for me, like, if the characters and the story aren't just like really gripping me it's yeah. hard for me to like really stay engaged. I don't know why the aesthetic thing really it, it takes to, you out of it. To, yeah, take me out of it more than you. I think that yeah. Well, I these are a lot of the films that I grew up on, so there's that too. But I I do like Robin Hood. I really liked like Aristocats though. Totally lost me, kind of on the aesthetic and on the fact that like the story wasn't as strong. But for me, Robin Hood the story was much more fun. It's ridiculous. Okay. Yeah, it's ridiculous. it's ridiculous. The sheriff of Nottingham has a southern accent. Okay. Yeah. Which, like, I never noticed as a child. I was never like, why does he have a southern accent when everyone else has an English accent? Except for Phil Harris, who's playing Blue again. <laughs> and so, like, there's like just a few characters. Phil Harris doesn't do anything. He just does Phil. He Harris. just does Phil Harris. 
And then, like, Friar Tuck is also, like, has kind of a southern thing going on, too. Yeah. And so, like, there's just, like, random southern accents going on with the country music thing, but also it's in England and, and with Prince John and everything. But it's just fun. Yeah. And you're just, like, don't it care. It is really fun. And I think it does tick a lot of boxes. In that, like, it has the convent thing, it has, like, the heart, yeah. the scene where Robin Hood brings the bow and arrow to the to birthday the party after the sheriff stole his gift. <laughs> oh! And the little kid's just like, he stole my birthday present. And you're like, I'm sad. <laughs> I'm really sad. And they're like, we, we all scrounged and saved to give it to him, and it's just so sad. I feel like that part, and I feel like the bow and arrow competition like I wouldn't change anything about there I actually feel like it's the second half of the movie that for me kind of loses my interest the whole jailbreak thing uh, the jailbreak part and the uh, it just feels a little slow I guess and also the the party scene I think yeah. just because they reused so much animation, I just wasn't that interested in it. I actually well, do really... like the song quite a bit, but... Yeah, the, thing is, the song is fun, but, like, it doesn't really feel like they're developing the characters much either in that part, like... I feel like they I mean? could have done way more with him and Maid Marian. Yeah. They and then have. right before that, there's also a scene where they're just, like, walking through different parts of the woods. Right. And, and they don't have much of a conversation. It seems like they could have had more of a conversation, Robin and Mary Marion. Yeah. I don't know. I just wanted more from their reunite. reunion. Because I liked them both so much. Like, I felt like there was so much there that we yes. could have had more, like, fun, flirty thing going on. But maybe... They well, because they're both such fun and, and, like, witty characters. It seemed yeah. like they should have had some witty... Yeah. Banter, you know? I mean, but... I love that he basically proposed to her while he was rescuing her. Yeah. From the whatever. It also is never clear, like, he's rescuing her, but, like, from... Because she's a prisoner? Or... Yeah, she's, like, not a prisoner. Or, like, I don't think she's a prisoner. She doesn't seem super, like, contained or anything. So it just seems no. a little weird. But, um... So that part was a little bit like, like you're rescuing okay. yourself and you're kidnapping her. That's what it's called. You're, you're kidnapping, kidnapping her and she I, wants to be kidnapped. It, it seems like is fine, Rob, Robin like, Hood kind of has that <laughs> thing, you know, it's like, oh, I'm, oh, not I'm stealing. helping the poor. <laughs> like, no, you're stealing from people. That's what you call it. <laughs> no, he says she's borrowing from the poor, yeah, from yeah. the rich to That's give to the poor. Says, yeah. Which was one of my favorite parts because then B- Baloo, I was about to say Baloo because then little John is like... <laughs> We're in debt. <laughs> it's like, we're in a lot of debt. We're in a lot of debt then. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like it's ridiculous, but I feel like it kind of sets up the ridiculousness. Like, there are films like Princess Bride or whatever where it's kind of ridiculous and whatever, but, like, it tells you it's going to be that yes, way. Yes, absolutely. From the first scene when um, little John is sawing the bottom of the, um, the chest of coins... He yeah. makes a hole in it with his knife, and somehow the four guards around it don't notice this a giant bear get underneath it and, and then do pour that. pour all the coins into her bra. Yeah, pour all the coins into her, her bra. Her bust. Her bust. It just doesn't... It's just ridiculous. And it's supposed to be funny. It's not supposed to be yeah. like, yeah, this is serious. They they pull the jewels off his rings by kissing them. Yeah. You're like, that it's wouldn't like work. Very poorly made rings. <laughs> yes. Maybe he should get his rings set by a new jeweler. But I also, think that's... those jewels are humongous. <laughs> I also love, though, that second scene when Prince John, he, like, he goes to kiss the jewels and he's like, no, no, no. I, I lose far too many jewels that way. <laughs> <laughs> the voice acting really is great. And honestly, I think if this film isn't on my n- new top five of the movies that we've watched so far it's like really close so and maybe it, if it's not like i know it's not like a tur- uh following the myth exactly or whatever but i have to say it's probably my favorite out of all the robin hood movies i've watched <laughs> i always I watch that- robin hood movies and i'm like uh, they don't get it they don't get robin well, hood <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think because there is so much suspension of belief yeah they don't need to explore the villainous side of Robin yeah. Hood at all. Like, they, I mean, they made everything very extreme. Like, yeah. oh, Prince John is definitely the villain. He tripled the taxes so everyone would go Literally into jail. Literally everyone's starving. And he's going to kill the friar. Yes, exactly. Like, it's you know, over the top. It's way over the top. And 
Robin Hood is just helping these people who have literally no money because the taxes are so high. Where yeah. in reality, if it was a true story, Prince John actually didn't raise taxes at all, is what I read. Oh, really? Oh. People just didn't like him. Oh, got it. <laughs> yeah. It was actually King Richard who had raised taxes because yeah. of his... Um, all of the crusades that he was going on. So yeah. to fund his uh, army. I mean, that was my thing in the original thing when I, we first started watching it and they're like, King Richard out there on the crusades. And I was like, crusades were like, not that great. Yeah, they're but like fine. really terrible. They're like kind of horrible, and it's, but it's fine. <laughs> um, but also, I I don't know. I just think like they made it fun. Like Sir Hiss hypnotized him to go on the crusades. And I was like, like, so all snakes can hypnotize people? I, don't... I, I guess so. That's a fact, Jonah. Do you know that? Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> I guess that's... The internet told me. I mean, <laughs> if they could, nobody would know, because then they would hypnotize them. And right, to not ha- knowing Have again. them forget. Exactly. That, Only yeah. Disney knows the truth. But, um... But yeah, I just think it's really fun. I think because they take it to such an extreme level, it almost becomes like a bullying movie. Like, the great bully, schoolyard bully, and all the kids take him down kind of thing you know what I mean like it almost takes it to that level rather than like of course it would be more complicated in real life but I just don't want to watch something that's complicated oh yes back back to my point is that (laughs) it makes this film a lot simpler and like you always want to root for Robin Hood so I feel like whenever I watch a live action I'm like why are they making it seem like he's not doing the right thing (laughs) because <laughs> <laughs> or making it like overly dark or whatever like yeah. i just want robin hood is fun it's a fun story it should isn't it I feel, <laughs> maybe it's not i feel like robin hood yeah at least to us like we want it to be a heist movie i do i want it to be fun even though they're villains you want them to succeed the whole time yes and i want it to be lighthearted and quippy and i want robin hood to have lots of one-liners and you know what i mean like, yeah it's a great time. Absolutely. So in the end, it holds up, right? Oh, yeah, totally. To me, it holds movie. up. You should watch it. It's a good movie. You should go watch it. It's fun to hear Robin Hood, Robin Hood's voice. Just good stuff. <laughs> Ooh, the lally. Ooh, the lally. Just a fun time and a little episodic, but I, I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're so happy that you've listened to this episode. Yes. And we just always encourage you, challenge you. To <laughs> admonish you. Admonish you. Plead with you. Command you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to follow us, leave us uh, reviews, comment on our thing, follow us on Facebook. Yeah, Shoot email us. Shoot us an email of at... your uh, Disney whatever. Just really whatever memories you have. Any fun experiences related Anecdotes. to Disney, childhood movies, etc. Um Send them to us at realrecollectionspodcast.com. Yeah, That's man. real spelled R-E-E-L. Uh, and also, What's Apple that? Podcasts. Really helps us if you review us on Apple Podcasts. Specifically. Because <laughs> the more reviews we have, the, the higher... More we get seen. Yeah, the more we get seen. Yep. So the more other people get to listen to us. <laughs> and then maybe one day you'll just be talking to your friend like, hey, I like this podcast. And be like, I, like I love podcast. it too. <laughs> Don't you want that moment to happen? <laughs> I mean, that could technically happen right now. but I guess that's true. <laughs> if you're like Chances both slip. members of our family. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you happen to know our family, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Anyways. But um, yeah, and we're really excited this month. Our, our next episode is going to be a little different. It's going to be fun. Yes. We're going to do some Halloween, October themed fair. So, tune in. Tune in. For later this week. Yes. And thank you for tuning into this one. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>